everybody. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not gone out yet. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lay down. So he went back and lay down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling at the ass at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hear it hears of it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family, from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons made themselves contemptible, and he failed to restrain them. But therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli of the vision. But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, Here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked. Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you and be it ever so severely if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord, let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of his words fall to the ground. And as Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Paul, for sharing that Old Testament reading. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be well-pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. For those I've not met, my name is Denise Halverson, and it's an honor and a privilege to stand in your pulpit today to share God's Word. To give you a little background, nearly 30 years ago, my mom, Helen Snyder, became a member of the First Covenant Church family. She loved to sing, and she recruited me to offer special music with her on the first Sunday of August that year. And somehow, I retained that coveted spot that first Sunday in August and had the opportunity and joy to share special music for many years thereafter. It finally became clear that God had much bigger plans for me here than that one Sunday a year, and what a blessing it has been to be a member of First Covenant Church. I've appreciated your prayers and support as I answer the call as chaplain at Friendship Haven. I remember Pastor Allen saying something to this effect 
In a sermon, he shared, when God speaks, you say, yes, Lord. See what happens when we listen to Pastor Allen's sermons. <laughs> Seriously, though, no one heralds the gospel message and the love for Jesus like our Pastor Allen. He's an inspiration, and through his scripture-based sermons, we hear God's voice. Would you say that there is a difference between listening and hearing? In the Bible, the words listen and hear are often used interchangeably, but today I'd like to make a distinction. Hearing is something that happens to you. Sound waves hit your ears and you hear. At any given moment, we can hear many things, but we often filter out certain sounds. I learned to do this well when I studied to be a court reporter. It was imperative to record testimony word for word. So I became conditioned to block out all extraneous noise and focus only on the words of the judge and the attorneys and those who are testifying. My husband, Paul, is also a pro at filtering out sounds. And <laughs> yes, my voice in particular. <laughs> but I think we can dub that selective hearing. Right, Paul? <laughs> I suspect some of you married folks know exactly what I'm talking about. In general, we don't really pay attention to many of the sounds around us. That's why when our worship service ends, we can fully engross ourselves in conversation with a friend, even though the praise band is playing and the room is buzzing with activity. Hearing is an act of our senses. Listening is an act of our will. Hearing happens to you. But listening is something we choose. We choose to focus on what is being heard. Where do you focus your attention? To whose voice, to whom do you listen? The voices we listen to have a tremendous influence on our actions and our attitudes and our lives. There are so many voices. That's always been true. But there hasn't always been Facebook and Twitter and CNN and Fox and emails and texts and oh, the list goes on. His voice, her voice, their voices, we hear them and we hear them all day long. This has never been truer than this week following recent presidential race developments the WNBA All-Star Game, and the opening ceremonies of the Olympics. So much to hear, but are we good, discerning listeners? Think about this. Listening comes first in life. We hear our parents' voices in the womb long before we can see or touch them. And once we're born, we listen for months before we ever speak. And when we finally learn to speak, we're taught to listen before we speak. Listen first. That said, have you ever spoken first and felt like a fool? Oh yes, guilty. When my son Miles was in high school, I heard via the mom grapevine that he and his friend had been up to some shenanigans on Friday night, of which I greatly disapproved. When he tiptoed into the house a little after curfew, which only added fuel to the fire, I gave him the what for without ever listening to his side of the story. In that moment, I was the poster parent for Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2, 
which tells us that fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. Oops. <laughs> when I took the time to listen to Miles and learned that he and his buddies had parted ways before the incident, I was embarrassed and I was ashamed for having so quickly jumped to the wrong conclusion. I spoke before I listened. And that situation turned out to be a really good lesson for both of us. We can be encouraged by God's heart for us to be better listeners. In James chapter 1, verse 19, we're taught, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And who's the very best poster parent at listening? Our Heavenly Father, of course. Here's an example. There's a tender story in the Old Testament about Hannah. She was a believer in God who couldn't have children. It hurt because she so longed for a child. What made matters worse was that her husband, Elkanah, had another wife. And that wife, Penina, had several children. She rubbed it in Hannah's face. Look at all my children. Too bad you don't have any. That's the voice Hannah heard. Year after year, she went to worship at the tabernacle in Shiloh. She cried and wept, and she poured out her heart to God again and again. But she remained barren. She prayed, reminding him that she was his servant and wanted but one thing only. Then she made a promise. Oh, God Almighty, she said, if you will only see my misery and remember me by giving me a son, then I will give my son to serve you for all the days of his life. After Hannah returned home, her prayer was answered. God opened her womb, she conceived, and she gave birth to a son. She gave her precious son a special name, Samuel. And Samuel in Hebrew means God has heard or God listens. He sure does. Hannah asked for a son and God gave her a prophet. God answered more abundantly than she had even asked. When her heart and God's heart became a perfect match. Being good to her promise, when Samuel was old enough, Hannah brought him back to the tabernacle and dedicated him to a life of service there. As much as she loved her son, Hannah loved her God who listened more. That didn't happen much in those days. In fact, our scripture passage tells us that in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. But apparently that didn't bother Hannah. She didn't care what anybody else was doing. God came first, and she dedicated her son to him. So even as a little boy, Samuel served God with Eli, the priest at the tabernacle. So dedicated, in fact, that he slept there. And here's where we pick up on today's Old Testament lesson. Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle when he heard someone call his name, Samuel. How do you react when someone calls your name in the middle of the night? You wake up with a start, right? So picture this little boy. He hears his name and he wakes up. What? Here I am. But nobody's there. 
So he runs to Eli, the priest, and he says, here I am, you called me? Suddenly, there's this little person next to Eli's bed in the middle of the night. Many of us know those kind of nights and how Eli must have felt. Eli said, I did not call, go back to bed. So back to bed, Samuel went. But then it happened again. The voice, Samuel, run to Eli. Here I am, go back to bed. Then it happened a third time. But instead of getting impatient, Eli finally catches on. It must be God, he thought. So Eli told Samuel, if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. With that, Samuel went back to bed. Do you think he fell asleep? No way. Can you imagine the anticipation? God himself is calling me. Wouldn't that be something? Samuel waited for the voice to come again, and it probably seemed like forever. But then God did speak again. And listen to this description. The Lord came and stood there, calling as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. God came and stood by Samuel's side. I really don't know how that worked, but it sounds absolutely amazing. And God said to Samuel again, and Samuel said, as he had been told, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. What a great story, and let's take it one step further. I told you what Samuel means, right? God listens. Samuel's relationship with God started with God's grace in listening to his mother's prayers for his son. God does listen. But then it became Samuel's time to listen to God. When the Lord looks for someone to serve him, he looks for those who listen to his voice. Samuel went on to become one of the greatest prophets in the Bible. And the secret to Samuel's success as a prophet was not that he excelled in speaking, but that he knew how to listen. God doesn't really need our great ideas. He's looking for listeners. And to whom we listen really matters. So I ask again, to whose voice do you listen? This is where it starts as Christians. Followers of Jesus are people who listen to God's voice. People like Samuel who do say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. But imagine if you were to make a chart of the voices you listened to over the past week. In your free time, when you got to choose, how much time did you spend listening to cable news, Netflix, talk radio, sports analysts, pop music, God? We might be embarrassed to see a list like that, might we? 12 hours of Fox or CNN and one hour of church on Sunday. 16 hours of social media, and that's the average in the U.S. And in some cases, no time in the Bible. Does it matter? Some might suggest that we don't need God as much as people used to. I contend that we need him more. What we don't need is a watered-down, weak, self-absorbed religion that looks nothing like what the Bible teaches. When we move away from the Word of God as we strive to answer eternal questions, we leave ourselves open to lies and deadly false teaching. In this church, we are fortunate to hear God's words preached directly from the Bible. 
Pastor Allen encourages us to ask, where is it written? He can always tell us chapter and verse. We have strong children's programs and educational adult Bible studies. Our dedicated prayer warriors fervently pray for our pastor and for our congregation. But I suggest that as a society, we're neglecting God's voice. How excited do you think Samuel was when he went back to bed the third time and waited for God to call him again? Do you think his heart was pounding? Probably. I can only imagine his self-talk. God's going to speak to me. I can't wait. This is awesome. God is going to speak to me. And God still speaks. He speaks to us through the Bible, and that, too, is very exciting. How can our hearts not race? God wants to talk to us. What if when God called Samuel and said, ah, I am too tired. I've got a big day tomorrow, maybe another day. Well, that would have been crazy, wouldn't it have? So how is it that we get so used to saying no to God's word? We're too busy, too tired, too many activities, but God understands, right? No, God does not understand. He doesn't understand at all. I hear this idea a lot, actually. I can be a Christian without listening to God's word. You don't need to worry about me. I, I believe in God. I'm just not into that Bible stuff. Well, it doesn't really matter what I say about that, but God says no. That's impossible. That's absolutely impossible. You can't be a Christian without hearing God's word. From Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. A Christian who doesn't hear God's word is like a plant that doesn't get water. Over time, what happens? It withers, and eventually, it has no life. Here's an example. Do you know what message God gave to Samuel that night? It really isn't what we might expect. It sounds like a cute story, a little boy, here's God's voice, but we heard in our passage what God actually said to Samuel. He told Samuel that he was about to judge the priest Eli and his family because Eli's sons were godless, immoral men, and Eli had refused to discipline them. That part doesn't usually make it into the children's Bible storybook. Even the priest of God and his family weren't listening to God's word. So they were to be judged, to be cut off from God's favor. And the house of Eli was punished forever. That's unsettling to think about, isn't it? As we heard in our reading, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. Imagine a place where people die without the comfort of God's promise of heaven. Imagine a place where sin is praised, where immorality is laughed at, where greed goes unchecked. Imagine a place where people are so used to not hearing God's word that they don't even notice that it's gone. In a place like this, people eventually despair about everything. And maybe we don't have to imagine. Sounds like our current United States of America, doesn't it? What happens when we stop listening to God's voice? Just look around 
and try to put yourself in God's shoes when you realize that you're talking but few are listening what do you do you stop talking but not God he loves us too much and by grace God still speaks to us through his word and he has so much to say about everything what do you think might flow to the headlines in the coming weeks based on current events? Issues of race from Galatians chapter 3. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. How about division? Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other just as God forgave you. That's from Ephesians chapter 4. And there is nothing like the Word of God. How about mockery of Christianity? From Matthew chapter 12. Whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I tell you. People will be forgiven for every sin, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. I saw a post on Facebook this week that said, if you find yourself irritated, you're spending less time with God and more time with the world. But at that moment, I happened to be stressed and maybe even a little irritated. Now, do I think that God was speaking to me through Facebook? Probably not, but it was a good reminder to me that I, too, need more time with God. More time listening to His voice. What are you in need of hearing from God today? Do you need hope? From Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. Are you discouraged? Jesus says, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. Feeling guilty? The blood of Jesus, God's Son, purifies us from all sins. You can find that in 1 John chapter 1. So you can hear it. God is still speaking. He's calling out to us all. And he calls out to us through the words in the Bible. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10, we hear these words Jesus said, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My sheep listen to my voice. In 1 Kings, Elijah heard God speak in a still, small voice. And we can't hear that still, small voice in a whirlwind of a chaotic life. So maybe this week, put down your phone, turn off your TV, stop talking, and hold and read your Bible more. Listen for his voice. A heart willing to listen and obey is the key to hearing from God. I promise you this. When you do, you'll find comfort in him that you will not find anywhere else. God is patient and gracious and he perseveres. And when he calls, here's what you say. Here I am. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening.
To God be the glory. Amen.